I think it's time to get started. You get the front row. That's what I wanted. Sylvia, you can have the front row. And we will be asking you for entertainment in a little while. Uh, thank you all for coming this morning to the current events program. Um, if you would turn off the cell phones, that would be a good idea. Be sure to check to check the events table. I have a problem with this thing. Uh, we have a schedule of programs offered by other senior centers and libraries in our area. You may be interested to know what's going on in other senior centers too. Um, next month on February 9th, um, Beth Whitsett from the University of Utah will bring her presentation on the United States Constitution. She will relate um, several avenues of discussion. And with what is going on now with our government, I'm sure she'll have something, and I'm not sure what yet. <laughs> she, she doesn't want to let me know, so there we go. Then in March, on March 9th, um, our second senior science event, we had most interesting and varied groups of science-related uh, individuals come last year and wanted to do it again. So if you do have or have an interest in science or a passion and you know someone, please let somebody on our committee know about it or call me. Um, I have a couple of committee members here if you want to stand up. Jody, is, the Bridgefords are out of town. I don't see anybody else right now. But it was a really, really fun event, and I hope you can come to that one. Okay. Now for our guest, and it's another dad and son team for us today. I'm the dad. <laughs> Most of you already... <laughs> Most of you already know Tom Zane as he's a regular at the current events and the free thinkers. What you may not know about him is that he served 22 years in the Army military police officer conducting criminal investigation. Then as a private citizen, he educated police recruits in the cri critical thinking process. Anything else you want to add? I think that covers it, thank you. Okay. I tell my guests, you guys don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from them. So the introductions are short, and if they want to add to it, that's great. Um, the other Tom is a professor at the Salt Lake Community College. He instructs the faculty how to teach and test critical thinking to their students. Tom also travels to national teachers' conferences about his program. He has a master's in statistics and a PhD in education. Now the two Toms will lead us down the path to critical thinking. automated thinking. 
It's not where you just decide without thought. Uh, a lot of people will hear something on the news and say, I believe this. That's what critical thinking is not. A lot of people will confuse critical thinking with other types of thinking. For example, uh, especially back in the 60s, military first responders and people in medical field that follow protocols or follow orders, people thought that they were not critical thinkers. That's not the same thing. People that are in the military think very deeply before they follow orders, believe me. Dad, you thought about it. Yes, sir. And, I, those, and those who didn't got into trouble often. And I thought about it. Uh, I was an EMT as well. I thought about it a lot, believe me. People of faith think about it. Faith is not the opposite of critical thinking. Unbelief is the opposite of faith. So those two things are not the same continuum as critical thinking. Critical thinking and the opposite of that is automated thought where it's just not asking the right questions and not thinking. Okay? Next slide, please. Why it's important? Well, anybody that's watched the news lately, <laughs> Not thinking leads to bad outcomes. Really good thinking leads to happiness, leads to tolerance, leads to social justice, leads to progress. Our Juan Diego people back there are going like this. Yep. Uh, I can quote, I had a whole bunch of quotes that I was gonna give you. People like Martin Luther King uh, and others but all through time, if you go all the way back to ancient scripture, through the Federalist Papers, etc., you can get all kinds of quotes. Call critical thinking what you will. There's lots of different titles for it. Good thinking equals good civilization. Dad, you're up. What does it take to be a critical thinker? It takes energy. You've got to want to do it. You do not need to be a genius to be a critical thinker. During my military and law enforcement career, I knew some cops who were great critical thinkers, and the quality of their work showed it. My son, I think he's got a comment about PhDs and critical thinkers and some that aren't. I know some PhDs that I work with that are just brilliant in their field. But guess what? They can be dumb as stumps. They can be just like everybody else and not think on other issues. Okay, what does it come down to? All together, ask the question. Ask the question. All right. Let's see. How to ask the right questions. If you go to different authors, you will find critical thinking called different things. If you look under critical thinking on the internet, you'll find all kinds of advice on how to do it. This is one way. First, you have to understand the issues. You've got to suck in the information. Okay? You've got to figure out what it is and understand it which means not rushing to judgment, not making a decision before you understand it. You remember the old, who remembers Dragnet? Anybody besides me? Okay, you guys in the back, you, you were born after it went away, but. Okay, you remember what he used to say? Just the facts, man, just the facts, okay. Another way of putting it is the old who, what, when, where, why, and how. Remember that? So ask yourself that. Another thing to remember is, what do you have to remember about the media? They're always right. Oh, they're always right. Every media outlet has an editorial policy that leans one way 
Orleans another way, to some extent, okay? No matter who they are, they will lean one way or another. And so as you read or listen to any media story, it's going to lean one way or another. And all of us tend to watch or read media that we tend to agree with. So you have to be careful when you're sucking in that information and recognize that. Number two, you have to analyze. You have to break it down. You have to figure it out. You have to seek out the information and try to figure out what's real and what's assumption. And that can be hard sometimes. We're going to do some exercises today where you're going to try to figure out what questions to ask. And sometimes those questions don't have answers. Okay, number three, you have to evaluate. You have to make a judgment call. You have to make some decisions on your own. Sometimes those will be uncomfortable for you. Sometimes they may go against what you believe. They may go against your most cherished beliefs. You have to decide what's true, whether there's relevance or quality to it. And sometimes you have to admit, I don't know. And finally, you have to make a decision or draw a conclusion or not. All right. Let's give it a try. Next slide, please. All right. We got some rules. We're going to have a little game all through the rest of the session, and you're going to be a part of the game. You're going to be shouting out some questions. We're not going to be discussing issues today. Okay? We're not going to be discussing issues. I'll be taking the mic out if we need it. But you want to do that? Okay. Yeah, mainly he's going to be using it. Okay, sorry. Uh, no, mainly, she got me in trouble. I know, I'm trying to. We're not going to be discussing issues. So, would you hold up the red cards right there? See those red cards? I have those for a reason. If anybody strays into discussing issues, instead of talking about what questions you would ask about the issues, I want all the rest of you to yell, red card. <laughs> so if any one of you starts talking about the issue, instead of what questions to ask about the issue, the rest of you are to yell, red card. And I'm going to stick one of those right up here. Sorry about that. OK? So you can't talk about the issues. That's the rules. Yes? decades or so, the news media will make a flat statement and expect us to believe it, but they give no facts, no details. They just expect us to believe Hold what they up. say. Red, red, red card! Red card! That's my opinion. That's my opinion. <laughs> Thank you for the perfect example. <laughs> She was not a plant. <laughs> That's an example. We don't talk about the actual issues. And here's why. In order to really understand critical thinking, we're going to break the rules of high society. What are the two things you don't normally talk about at social gatherings? Religion and politics. Religion and politics. Guess what we're going to talk about today? Religion and politics. My two favorite subjects. And that's why we're not going to talk about the issues. We're only going to talk about the questions you would ask about those issues so that you could personally get to the bottom of them. Okay? So the rule is don't talk about the issues, only talk about the questions. Dad, you're up. If you look at the one of the handouts, the one with the Technicolor 
pictures on it. At the top left of the one under the heading from our website, the big winner. I'm from the Canadian Lottery, and you have won a million dollars. Pay the import tax and fee, and we'll send you your winnings. What would you ask? What would you want to know? Can you take the import tax and fee out of my winnings? Can you take the import tax and fee out of my winnings? Who are the Canadian? Who is the Canadian Lottery? Who is this Canadian Lottery? What are the taxes and fees, and who gets them? What are the taxes and fees? When did I buy a ticket for that? When did I buy a ticket for that? I don't remember. Anybody else? Good. Let's look at number two. One more. One, One more. I'm sorry. Yeah. Where does the money for the lottery, some goes to something else besides the winner? Who else gets the money besides the winner? Can we? Can you send it to me in writing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Say it again. Can you send it to me in writing that I won? Secondly, the doctor representative. Research shows conclusively that these new capsules will stop your disease in its tracks. <laughs> what disease? What disease? <laughs> what disease? What disease? What disease? Exactly. Where is your research based? How do you know what disease I have? How do you know what these are disease I, I, I have? Are you just doing this to get my money? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you would get an answer to that one. In the back. Well, what are the side effects? What are the side effects of these pills, these wonderful magic pills? Well, how much do they cost? How much are they? Who did the funding for this research? Who funded the research? What's in the pills? <laughs> what are the ingredients? You probably don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> what drug company developed them? What drug company developed them? If I pay for it through Visa, are you going to monthly charge me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. If I pay for it yeah. through Visa, are you going to monthly charge me? Current scam going on. Where can I find out more about this? Where can I find out more about this? Number three, the police department and fire department. We're raising money for officers or firefighters injured in the line of duty. How much will you be donating, donating today? Uh, this is a favorite of mine. Send it to me in writing, give me your name so I can check how you're registered with the state. I don't think I need to repeat, Don. <laughs> Did everybody hear that one? Yeah. Okay, anybody else? What organization do you actually represent? Exactly. What organization? What department? What's your website? Who, who employs you? Who pays your fee? Who pays your salary? This thing keeps cutting out. Anybody know why? That's the way it works. Always has. <laughs> yeah. okay. More? Other questions? I don't do business on the phone. <laughs> I don't do business on the phone. Red card. Red card. That was not a question. <laughs> that was not a question. Ah, oh, red card. Oh. It wasn't a question. <laughs> Put it in the form of a question. <laughs> Why should I do business? Why should I do business on the phone? <laughs> okay, take down his red card. That was a good one. Front row. What portion of my donation will actually go to the fire department or police department? What part of my donation will actually get to the department to help them? Very good. What is your local phone number? How can I call and verify this information? Next. Next slide. All right. Thank you. Those are all. There we go. Yes. Well, 
we, we uh, skipped the last part. What can we do to avoid these jerks? Okay, what can we do? Ask questions. You ask, ask questions. the right questions. Yeah, well, what can we do to avoid these jerks? <laughs> you had that up there. I'll be, uh, you ask years. enough questions, they won't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> If you look on the uh, oh. on YouTube, they have lots of YouTube examples of people calling uh, with these kinds of scams and people talking to them. And sometimes they'll talk for a half hour. <laughs> Getting these people talking, it's crazy. Can you make a game out of keeping them on the phone? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Any some of those. I did. Well, done. So, well here, if you've got call screening, then you know, just don't answer it because right. if you answer it, they'll know you exist. Yeah, we at our house we don't even answer. Yeah, everybody hear that? If if you call waiting or call screening ID ID, ID. ID. and you don't recognize it, if it's just don't answer. If it's somebody that you really need to talk to, they'll leave a message. Right. Otherwise, if you answer it, this, this nefarious caller. We'll know someone's there and give you a lot of trouble. Okay, let's go into this one in the interest of time. This one's been in the news for quite a while. Uh, this one's been one that I've had trouble with because I've been down there quite a bit. I'm a photographer. I've hiked all over this area. I've photographed a lot of the Anastasi sites. Uh, I've done uh, many, many days in this area. And so it's near and dear to my heart. Uh, but I don't know how to think about the monument. And listening to the news doesn't help me much. So here's what I was able to find as I read news reports and listened to the news. Reasoning for reducing the size of the monument. The majority of the residents in the area don't want it. The land will still be protected from gas and oil and the Native American sites will still be protected. Okay, that's what's in the news. What sorts of questions can you ask yourself to help you determine how to feel about this? What are the sorts of questions you can ask yourself? Is any of these statements true? Okay, are any of the statements true? What else? What area? Define area. Define the area. What is the real area? Define the residents who were questioned about how they... Good. Define the area. residents of the area. What exactly companies are involved in the gas oil? What companies are involved, okay? Who took the majority survey? Who took the and survey? why? And why? What questions did they ask in the survey? What questions did they ask in the survey? What exactly is a national monument? How will the Native American sites be protected? How will the Native American sites be protected? Who is benefiting from the monument? Who is benefiting from the monument? Are there other examples where this type of thing has been done before? Are there other examples where this has been done before? If this goes through and you reduce the monument, will you be working with the Native Americans as to how it all will work. If this goes through, will you be working with the Native Americans to make sure it works? Anything else? Is it legal? Do they care about the Native Americans? Do they care about the Native Americans? Is it legal? Uh, will excavations for archaeological things be reduced? Will excavations be reduced? What else? Can a law be quoted whereby the authority to do this kind of thing can be quoted and people, public, can go to those laws and look them up themselves? Is there a law that we can look up that actually makes this legal? OK, 
Okay, how are they going to pr actually protect and take care of these sites? What level of uh, NEPA compliance will be required for uh, the uh, gas, oil, and commercial uses? What kind of compliance will be required for gas and oil? How will we enforce these laws? How will we enforce these laws? Do some compare and contrast about the monument that was was designated and what how the reduction changes things. Let's see the comparison and contrasting of uh, the monument that was. Okay. Oh, how can we compare? How can we, how can we compare? <laughs> That's what she said and I didn't say it. It's my fault. How can we compare the two? Compare and contrast our questions. Okay. All of these would help you understand the issue better. All of these are designed to help you collect information and figure out the issue. Can you change the slide, please? Here are some of the facts. Now notice I put quotes around the facts. The reason is, depending on the website or the newspaper or the media outlet that I looked at, and depending on who was being quoted or interviewed at the time, they changed. Oops. That told me a lot right there. It told me that it was a real fluid situation. Some people said that, okay, the majority of the population is non-white down there. That those opposing the monument tend to be white and that there's a history of difference in voting down there between the white and the non-white uh, peoples in that area. There's also vast and complex differences in almost every issue that's been brought up in the media between different groups and between different people. And it's not just a simple yes or no black or white difference. It's yes because of this, yes because of that, no because of this, no because of that, and so it's so complex that it's hard to compare. When I got done reading all of this, what do you think I felt? Confused. Confused. Totally and awfully confused. You had a hand? I was just curious uh, on, the, on the conclusion there. Those, those opposing the monument tend to be wider around the ass. What was the Native, Native American factor figured in there, or was it? How, how how do, how do we draw that conclusion? All I'm doing is reporting what I read in some of the news reports. So those aren't necessarily facts then? That's why I put the quotes up there. Okay. All right. All right. Those are just what some people have reported. Okay. Some of them may be alternative facts. <laughs> <laughs> My point to all of this is when you're doing critical thinking and you're trying to collect facts, you don't know. As an individual, I don't know. And I have no way of actually finding out other than doing my research and trying to trust those that I'm reading. Yes? Wouldn't you say a fact would be uh, that a federal judge re required San Juan County to redistrict yes. because of gerrymandering? And now all of a sudden it looks like from that that there's going to be more Native Americans on their councils. Councils. That's a fact, isn't it? I didn't find that one. It's been in the paper. I just didn't find that one. It's there. So my point to all of this is when you're doing critical thinking, sometimes you get to the end and it doesn't help you. I'm just as confused now about how I should feel about their ears as I did before. I still want to be able to go down there and take my pictures. I still love the area. I think it's beautiful. I still don't want to see, for example, where I went to take pictures turned into a strip mine. But I don't know how to think. So I still am asking lots of questions. And that's all I can do. And that's what critical thinking is about, is asking the right questions. Would a good question be, what are the pros and cons? Because you're not going to get all one way or all the other. 
That would be a good approach, yes. And that's what I'm continuing to do. All right, let's move on. We've got to move on. Technicolor handout on the right hand side. The Internal Revenue Service called and you owe taxes, allegedly called. You owe taxes and are at a grave risk of large fines or jail time. If you don't settle this situation immediately, you could go to jail. What questions would you ask? Can you take me to jail now? <laughs> Can you take me to jail now? I'm, so, I'm tired. <laughs> Free room and board, right? Exactly. Three hot to the cot. Uh, please send me a letter of these facts. Please send me a letter. Yes. Does the IRS make notifications of this kind on the phone? Does the IRS make this kind of a notification on the phone routinely? No. The answer is no. Can you give me your phone number so I can call you back? Please give me your phone number. I want to call you back. Please tell me how many people actually fall for this, and then I'll leave out the next word. <laughs> the, president, the president used it. Bullshit. Oh, uh, what year is those taxes owed for? What year were those taxes owed for? Just hang that damn thing up. You earned that one. You earned it. Who else? Okay, you've got a long distance lover, somebody who's been in communication with you. In these weeks of chatting, I've fallen in love with you. Send money for a plane ticket and all the magic that will happen. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What? Define magic. <laughs> Define the magic. Come on, Chris. In the back. What's your sign? <laughs> What's your sign? What's your horoscope? <laughs> the military rep. I'm from the Veterans Administration, and you're entitled, as an ex-soldier, to benefit from this program. I just need to know da 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 da. -da. You're asking. If you're from the military representative, from the VA, you should have that information. Why don't you? If you are, oh, if nice you are for real, end. you should nice, have that nice information. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you? <laughs> Why don't you? <laughs> I don't know that part. No, not for me. I don't give this information time. on the phone. I don't give red information card. on the phone? Red card. Red card. Red card. What was your question? Question. Oh, yeah. Make it into a question. Why should I give this information on the phone? Okay. Okay, half of one. <laughs> this is more fun than going to college. <laughs> You've got to come to my classes. Yeah. How did somebody who's never been in the military get this uh, offer? How does somebody who's never <laughs> been in the military get this <laughs> offer? And can I keep it? <laughs> can I keep it? <laughs> Can I have the number of your bank account? I came up with another one that I kind of like. You get a phone call from someone who, this is for an elderly person, a couple of them in the room. You get a phone call from someone who says they're your grandson. Uh, and they're stranded in Timbuktu or whatever. And they need you to send money to them so they can get home. What question do you ask? What's your mother's name? What's your mother's name? What's my grandson's name? What's my grandson's name? Yeah. What color are his eyes? What's his birthday? What's your birthday? Right on. You're going to ask me my son's birthday? 
<laughs> I'm in trouble. No, okay. Asking your son your birthday. Well, Moving on. Okay. So you can see in all of these cases, asking the right questions is going to stop them in their tracks. One of my favorites when I get these calls is, can you give me your supervisor's number and I'll call back? Click. <laughs> All right. Ah, yes, this one. This one's been in the news, too. I'll get this one. <laughs> this one's been in the news as well. Uh, this one uh, was really interesting to work on and uh, is a favorite of mine because of the nature of it. The legislature did lower the uh, blood alcohol down to 0 0.05. The proponents argued that it was a public safety issue, that it would protect the public, that it would reduce the injuries and deaths. The opponents, on the other hand, didn't say that it wouldn't do that. They said instead that it was imposing religious views, reducing personal choice, and would hurt tourism. Very different arguments, aren't they? Completely different. Okay? What questions can you ask in order to get to the bottom of this? Yes? What are the statistics as to the blood alcohol level of people who are actually causing the accidents? What are the blood alcohol statistics levels that are actually causing accidents? Good. So. Statistically, what this is, is what's the impairment level? And so clinically, it's the impairment level that we're looking for. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. I'll show you another slide. That's a good one. Thank you. Are there other states with that low alcohol? Are there other states with that low a level? Have they shown that it reduces the injury? And have they shown whether it reduces? Okay. How much does this increase the police re of the revenue for the state? How much does this increase the revenue for the state? What else? Can you even have a glass of wine and maintain that level? Can you have a glass of wine and maintain that level? Okay, all of these have been on that, those two. What can you ask about these? Yep, in the form of a question. Yeah, yeah but all this wasting money and time. Red card. Ask a question. <laughs> ask a question. Okay. <laughs> what else? How is it going to hurt tourism? How is it going to hurt tourism? Okay. What is the background of legislative religious background of legislators proposing this? Okay. What is the religious background? We already know that one. <laughs> what else? <laughs> How is my personal choice reduced? How is my personal choice reduced? Why should drinking and driving be illegal? Why should drinking and driving be, be illegal? Come on. <laughs> well, that's pretty bad. <laughs> okay. How is this hurting tourism? How is it hurting tourism? Okay. The point to all this is, if you're going to be honest with yourself <clears throat> as a critical thinker, you need to ask both sides of the issue, regardless of which side you happen to be on. If you agree with lowering it or don't, if you're going to be a critical thinker, you need to ask both perspectives. Now here's the interesting thing that we found. Go to the next slide, please. 
when we looked at the results and the statistics, the statistics at the present time are about 50-50, for and against. And the really interesting thing is, the religion thing didn't play out. What was really interesting was, it was drinkers versus non-drinkers, which in this state means religion. religion comes into play. But when you look at the people that are not LDS, for example, the non-drinkers tended to vote for it, and the drinkers tended to vote against it. And so it was the drinkers versus the non-drinkers that had the bigger effect. And so it was confusing the issue. Yes? So to the last one, no other hard evidence available? Actually, that is not a truth. There is, on the state's website, they track alcohol-related accidents. And that is a minor amount of accidents that occur under the 0.08 level. Red car. Red car. <laughs> well, we're not in the question. We're not in the question. Oh. So, but, <coughs> but in terms of whether it's impairment yet, has not been proven. Here's the issue. The issue is safety. Right. But none of the other states are collecting that. None of the medical people have said impairment is actually here, or here, or here, or here. Europe has. Yeah, true. However, in Europe, the uh, taverns are within walking distance of homes where driving right. is Right, and not that's what I was going to say. Okay. And tourism <laughs> hasn't been hurt, but is tourism the same thing as it is here in Utah? Can you really compare tourism apples to oranges? It's not the same. So the problem is that the data for both the pro and the opponents is equivocal. There are problems with the data on both sides. And so that leaves you with holes in the data for both sides. And so when you look at uh, the support, yes, those two groups did support the law. That's on record. But when you look at their statistics, they aren't exactly what is needed. When you look at the arguments that are made in opposition, most of them are what are known in our uh, academic world as emotional appeal, rather than statistical appeal. So you're still looking at two very different arguments and having to make an emotional decision on where you stand. And so the best information so far is it depends on how you feel. And so there's the critical thinking, is that it comes down to that. I find many times that uh, the two opposing groups have different agendas, but they masquerade as the same one. Right. And what this critical thinking exercise does for us when we go through this is it picks apart those different agendas and says, when they try to say that they're arguing the same thing, they're not. They're not even close. Yes? Uh, shouldn't this depend upon the individual? That is, some people can function just fine at a .08 and other people couldn't. We don't know that yet. There isn't enough data to prove that. What they do know is that there is a wide variance by metabolism, weight, and gender. But they don't know how wide for sure because they don't have a large enough study. Okay, shouldn't there be more criteria involved other than the alcohol level in the bloodstream? I can't say. That's my whole point, is I don't know. I, the conclusion I came to after doing this work was, I don't know. Have you had, are you a teetotaler? Oh. <laughs> I've never drunk uh, anything other than in communion. Uh -huh. So, thank you.
question. <laughs> <laughs> the people who are making the rules, if there's no conclusive evidence, should we be making rules based on inconclusive evidence? Good question. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, that's that's a, a good question to ask. To you as well, who doesn't know which way to decide on an issue, would you not go opposing it until you can get proper information? What's the default position? I don't know. <laughs> You're asking me to take a position on something that I don't understand. And I can't do that. So how come whoever those people took the decision from point A to point 5, those people, I don't know if they do or not, they drink or not, but I can tell you, a friend of mine, he can handle better than me a drink. He can have three drinks and he's still fine. If I think just maybe a few sips, I'm not fine. So who are those people that make this decision? I have no idea. I guess the real answer is how the designated <laughs> That's what I heard from the Mothers Against Drunk Driving. What was that? Have a designated, Has a, have a designated driver, and I'm often that driver. Whenever I go out with uh, friends from work, I'm that driver. For his father. And for my father. <laughs> <laughs> How about if you drink, don't drive? That's and that's another good one. If you do decide to drink, don't drive. If you go, for example, to Norway, their rate is 0.02. 0.02. Yep. Well, what's it in Russia? I don't know. <laughs> so the point is critical thinking is be honest with yourself. Look at the pro and the con, but also be honest that you may end up right where I am, no better than when you started. In fact, I'm worse off than when I started. <laughs> I'm more confused than when I started because it proved that the data that I thought I knew was worse than I thought it was. All right. On the back side of your Technicolor handout, a U.S. person called and claiming to be a U.S. Marshal and tells you that I'm calling from the courthouse and you miss jury duty. You have to pay $400 or you go to prison. What do you ask this person? <laughs> How quick can you come pick me up? <laughs> <laughs> How quickly can you come get me? <laughs> That'll slow him down. <laughs> Next one, the puppy breeder is a dog lover. You should know we just got a beautiful litter of purebred golden retriever puppies. Just two hundred dollars each. And that's a real deal. Any questions? <coughs> where, where can I get a copy of their papers? Where can I get a copy of their papers? Excellent. How many can I order, and can I pay cash? <laughs> <laughs> he said, "How many can I order, and can I pay cash?" What's your phone number? <laughs> Yeah, uh, we've got, we've got a lot of spammers that love your number. What makes you think I like dogs? What makes you think I like dogs? There are a lot of con games. In fact, if you will are interested in exploring bunco and con games and confidence games, up on the board is the address of the National Association of Bunco Investigators. And they list probably 50 or 60 uh, games that uh, are played, such as the gentleman, well, he's not a gentleman, a man shows up at your front door and he says, I've just been doing some roof roofing in the neighborhood and uh, I noticed that there's a problem with the roof on your house. I will give you a free inspection if you give me permission to go up and look. Well, guess what? When he comes down, you've got a problem. You sure do. According to your him. roof is in big trouble. He's a bunco artist. Okay, Tom, you're on. 
Am I up already? Uh, yeah, we're running, running short of time. Okay. Do we really have time to do this one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> we'll make time. All right. <coughs> this is too much fun. All right. <laughs> yeah. This is one that I've actually encountered. And it wasn't this particular one, but something similar. Uh, you're sitting down, and a friend is, sits right, down to eat with you. Ugh. Microphone. OK. A uh, friend sits down to eat with you and says, did you hear? I heard on the radio today that a report says that the LDS Church has endorsed Mitt Romney. What do you need to ask? <laughs> Back here. What does the church have to do with the government? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Was the radio report from Alex Jones? Was the radio report from Alex Jones? Which general authority said that? Which general authority said that? Since they're violating the IRS rule, when can we expect their taxes? When we when can we expect their taxes to be paid because they're violating the IRS? Has anybody checked into his background and history in Massachusetts and private life? Has anybody checked into his history in Massachusetts? It's perfect. Hmm? It's perfect. It's red card. Red card. <laughs> Which radio station did you hear it on? Which radio station did you hear it on? Why should I believe, why should I use the Mormon church as a reference to who I'm going to vote for? Why should I use the Mormon church as a reference for who to vote for? Regardless of that, what are his positions? Regardless of that, what are his positions? I already know. <laughs> First thing I would ask is, who actually said that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which general authority? Or which general authority? As it turns out in this case, you find out that what this person was listening to was a talk radio station, and it was a caller that called in. And this <laughs> caller had been in a Sunday school lesson and heard somebody in the Sunday school lesson talk about talking to a friend who was LDS. So that friend who happened to be LDS was the authority speaking, therefore, for the church. Now do you believe it? Are you going to call that the six degrees of uh, fake news? <laughs> so the, ne the next morning, that night and the next morning, do you see anything in the news on this? No. Nope. Somebody really filtered it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the point of critical thinking. What you hear may or may not have anything to do with the truth. It may be something that you really want to believe. It may be something that is near and dear to you. It may be something that you absolutely believe before you even heard it, and therefore you want to believe it. But you've got to be careful. You've got to ask the right questions. The last uh, group of three of uh, your Technicolor, I'd like to drop down to the bottom of the bank verifier. There's a problem with your checking account. Please verify this information so you can confirm things and fix the error. Wow, money. What questions do you ask? I have to get back to you so I can, uh, can, I, can I get back to you in 10 minutes so I can look this up? I need to look this up. Can I get back to you in 10 minutes? What's the name of my banking account? What's the name on my banking account? What bank are you calling from? What's, What's my checking account number that there's a problem with? Very good. There's a con game that also affects older people, and one of them involves a bank examiner. 
the bank exam, the person calls and says, I'm a bank examiner from the federal government, and there's a problem at your bank. We believe there's a, a teller that is uh, not doing things the way they should, in other words, doing illegal activity. We need for you to be do this very confidentially, go to your bank, and withdraw a sizable amount of money <laughs> in cash. <laughs> And I will come to your house and pick it up and give you a receipt. And then we'll know whether this teller is or is not functioning correctly. So and I will re redeposit the money in your account. Do you believe this? No. That's a weak one. Do people believe that? There are people that fall for cons all the time. They want to believe. I Oh, I'm willing. I want to help the federal government. I really want to catch whoever is bad. Oh boy. Sucker born every minute. No, I don't. Yeah. Now it's your turn. What might cause automatic thinking? Prejudice. 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 Oh, yeah. Good one. Confirmation bias. Confirmation bias. Confirmation bias. <laughs> Those two cover it. <laughs> Pretty much. If it makes you use your brain, and you don't. The basic, the, the bottom line without going into details is ask questions. Ask questions. And now it's your turn to ask questions. Go ahead. Just the premise, we have a no soliciting sign up. And actually, for a while, we had three no soliciting signs up. People still solicit. I'd like to know what to say to them, because normally they'll say to me, I noticed all of your signs, but I'm not really good at a critical thinking response to them. I'd like to hear from what I have. The question was, I have no soliciting signs, and people still ignore it, what can I say? I have the same sign on my door, and people still come to the door trying to sell stuff. What I usually do is I point to the sign and I say, have you read the sign? And they'll look at it, and they'll look at me, and they'll say, yeah, but... <laughs> and I'll say, no. Thank you. Have a good day. I'm nice about it. I don't get mad. I don't be mean. I just am matter of fact. You had a comment here. Yeah, I, I take a picture. Picture of them. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> some object, some run. <laughs> he takes a picture of them. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> They're on my property. I got the right thing. <laughs> Back and back. I just wonder if you're aware of a new scam going on, particularly on the uh, Facebook and the internet. When they offer you a free trial and you only have to pay shipping only. There's all they kinds of scams. They don't have to let you know that when they get your credit card, they're going to charge you every month whatever they feel like. Now you can, if you put it on your Visa card or something, you can protest and they can take the money back. There's wow. all kinds of scams like that that are going on. If you don't know who you're doing business with, you're at risk. Uh, I have received emails, for example, supposedly from my sister. It looked like it was from my sister. That was the return address. It wasn't from my sister. And it was because of uh, these scams. And it had a link that I was supposed to click on. Every time I get anything with a link, even if it's from a relative, I immediately email that person back and say, did you send this? And I ask them before I click on the link. We have at our college people that are actively working 24-7 to protect us from these scammers and these people that put in these links to if we click on that link, it'll lock up our computer and we're dead. One click and our computer is dead. 
It's that bad now. You get an email and it has a live link, you click on it and your computer is now down. So first thing I do is I write that person and I say, did you send me this? But if I don't know them at all, I immediately delete it, no matter how good it sounds. The better it sounds, the less likely it's true. I would also recommend you typing in your return address as opposed to replying to that email because they could phony up the sender. And so if yeah, you I put in the email address yourself, then you know where it's going. Yeah, I go in and I use my actual uh, mailbox. mailbox and I write to my system. Just so. Yeah. I would say if you do get a phone call from somebody, don't ask the person calling you for the phone number to call back on. You're just asking the scammer the phone number they want to give you. Look up your own bank number or credit card yeah. number or whoever. You've got to look that up separately. Call your bank, call the IRS, call the police department, non-emergency number, please. <laughs> That's hard to find sometimes. They don't make it easy. Call the city then. Yeah, I know. I just say it. But you're right, look it up and call them. Good, good. I also have, for example, I do all of my online buying with a special card. It's a firewall account. The only money that's on that card is money that I put on it. And I keep a very low balance on it, and when I'm gonna buy something, I have to move money onto it. Otherwise, it's near zero. How do you get those? I go to my bank and I open a debit card, a separate debit card, and when I go to Amazon, I see how much I need to spend, and I move that much money onto that card. It's an extra step, but it's okay. If somebody steals that card, they're going to be able to steal $2. That still exists and it doesn't work. Doesn't work. <laughs> Our home phone is on the do not call list and we are getting called all day long. Yeah. And, and I get spoofed numbers. I've had calls from the Village Inn and AutoZone for solar. Yeah. Solar sales people. They're spoofing yeah. the number. Yeah. Question at the back. I change my credit card number every two years. You change your credit card number every two years. Okay. Do you shred all of your receipts? Hell yeah. Cross cutter. Well, having just done this, I recommend that unless you're going to be uh, looking for a loan or other financial <laughs> transaction, freeze all your, uh, yes. your accounts with your the credit bureaus. Freeze all of your accounts, absolutely. With all three of them. All three, all of, three them. of them. What else? How do you protect yourself from all of these nasty people? Ask question. I noticed you said you were kind when you got a call, but why would I want to engage in conversation when they're trying to just sell me something or they're telling me my credit is not good when I know it's good? I just have oh, I I don't engage them in conversation. I just don't yell at them. He's talking about when they show up at your house. Come to the door. When they come to the door, I don't get nasty. I just, I'm nice to them and I tell them that I'm not interested and they can go away. But I, I have to agree with her in that I think a lot of times these people are Funko artists, they're professionals. 
the longer you deal with them, the longer you, you do yeah. this kind of stuff, you're playing with fire. And so uh, yeah. we, we as, as good people are, are trying to be polite and you're playing with fire. Lo yeah. The longer you stay on the phone with them, the, the more chance there is that they're going to find that, that chink in the armor and get Here, you. Here's what I do on so the phone. Just I will say, up. this is a do not call uh, number. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Just hang up. I give you permission. <coughs> Uh, back to the alcohol, blood alcohol level. I heard a new argument yesterday that uh, you didn't mention it, so I don't know if you heard it. The argument now is that they're attacking the wrong issue. The issue is repeat offenders and high alcohol blood level. They need to make the penalties more severe, keep them off the road. Okay. Right. I don't do online banking. And when I asked the bank uh, manager for a card, you know, give me a letter saying that you'll cover anything that's taken out of my bank, they wouldn't do it. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to, with some banks, to get them to cover things. Um, usually credit cards will reverse charges. Um, my bank, with some of my cards, will protect me. Um, it depends on the type of bank you have and the type of account you have. Well, I'm talking about online banking. <clears throat> if I purchase, for example, if Dad buys with his credit card on um, Amazon and somebody s stole his card, they reverse the charges because that actually happened. But he's talking about online banking. Okay, I do not do much online banking. For example, I have no banking on my phone. Nothing on my phone. I'm not even sure what online banking is. It sounds dangerous. Uh, well, I'm accessing your account, moving money around. Yeah, yeah. I do. Pay bills. You pay bills. I only do it from one computer that is locked down. And it's recommended after you've done that to. Um, exit the uh, explore the browser, right. whatever one you're using. Exit it so that and then clear the cache and then go back. Yeah, I have a I have a computer that's locked down in my house, and that's the only place that I access it. Yes. Uh, are there? Uh, I don't know. I hear different stories, but I wonder are there statistics? as to the number of accidents that are caused by distracted driving, that is talking on your cell phone, texting, yes. driving down the road with your elbows while you punch buttons on your electronic toy. There are some statistics on that. Some states have uh, created laws, I've heard. And I know that my son was in one state where they could actually ticket you if they saw you talking on a phone. I'm wondering how are these statistics, how this compares accident-wise to people with a blood alcohol level of 0.05. No idea. So there is a law being proposed on Capitol Hill to ban talking on your phone while you're driving. Right now it's legal. Never passed. I know that the, I only know my son was in a state that had that. Other questions? Oh, Tom, I would like to kind of close up now. I know. Okay, we're done. No, no, no. no, we don't want to be done. We could go on and on. But a lot of people have places to go, and I want them to have the opportunity to come up here and to meet both our Toms in person. And I thank you so much, both of you, for spending this time with us. This has been great. Thank you, thank you.